Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video, we will learn how to estimate stock beaters, and we will do so by implementing a linear regression. So if you are interested in machine learning or finance, this video will be interesting for you. Before we are starting to code, let's cover at least some basics on linear regression and CAPM. That is, the beta is the slope, which you are seeing here, of the regression line both in linear regression and CAPM terms. What do I mean by that? If we are taking a look at a simple form of a linear regression, we are seeing the dependent variable is defined as the intercept plus the predictor variable plus the error term, which is nothing else than the distance between the observed variable and the predicted variable, which is on this line here. So in capping terms, we have this exact same relation. We have the return of an asset, so for example, Microsoft, is defined as the alpha plus the beta, again, this is the slope of the regression line here, times the market return. So for example, the S&P 500 plus the error term, again, the distance between observed and predicted variable. Now let's move to real stock data and take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft has beta of 0.93. And this beta is calculated over five years on a monthly base. And we are gonna exactly replicate that. Let's get started by actually understanding this beta. So beta is defined as the covariance between the assets return, so for example Microsoft, and the market return, so for example the S&P 500, divided by the market variance of the S&P 500, for example. What does that mean in easy words? Well, a beta of 1 means that the asset, so for example Microsoft, moves in the same direction and in the same amount as the benchmark. Let's take an example. The S&P 500 is rising by 1%, then Microsoft is also rising by exactly 1%. A beta between 0 and 1 means that the asset moves in the same direction but in a lesser amount than the benchmark. So for example, S&P 500 rises by 1% and Microsoft is rising by 0.9%. That is also true for negative values. So a beta of minus 1 is that the asset moves in the opposite direction and in the same amount as the benchmark. So for example, if the S&P 500 rises by 1%, the asset is dropping by 1%. And of course, this is also possible for values between minus one and zero. Let's take a look at the modules we're needing. If you don't know what these modules are about, please click the video in the right corner. What's new is statsmodel.api.ssm. That is our module which we are needing for the linear regression. I already set up the start and end date here. This is nothing new. Just click my previous video if you don't know what's going on here. And I'm going back five years here as said as we want to calculate the five year beta on a monthly base. What I'm doing here is new now. So I'm getting the stock data from Microsoft which is MSFT. And this one here, this GSPC, is the S&P 500. So this is our benchmark, the market, as you remember. Now, I'm getting the adjusted close price for both of them. Now, let us execute this online request and print out what we got. And this is nothing new, right? We're just getting daily price data of Microsoft here and S&P 500 here. As we are interested to estimate the beta on a monthly base, we have to calculate monthly returns first. And that is done by the resample function of pandas. That's only possible because we have a daytime index in this data frame. So we are typing in df.resample and then we need to define a key. This could be anything like three days, two days and so on, but we are taking m for month. And then we need this forward fill and PCT change. Now let's store that in a variable which we are calling monthly returns. And actually let's print that out to see what we got. Okay, perfect. 
we got everything what we wanted, right? We got the monthly returns here for Microsoft and the S&P 500. Unfortunately, we're noticing that there is a, not a number value here, which is due to the fact that we did a forward fill here. And we have to get rid of that. And we can do so by just dropping this row by MTL red drop an A. And then we're taking axis zero as an argument, which is just telling pandas to drop the row and not the column, which would be axis to one. So if we're executing that and actually print that out afterwards, we are getting this, well, let's only print out the head here. We are getting the monthly returns without not a numbers and IN values. And now we have everything to get started with our regression model. As already pointed out in the beginning, a simple linear regression model consists of a dependent variable or predicted variable, and that is defined as the intercept plus the slope coefficient times the predictor variable or an independent variable plus the error term. And in CAPM terms, we got the return of an asset equals to alpha plus beta times the market return plus an error term. Now let us define the dependent and independent variable and we're starting with the independent variable. That is x, so this one here. And that is, in CAPM terms, our market return. So in our data frame monthly returns, that is the S&P 500 returns. So we just have to define the data frame monthly returns and access this column here, GSPC. And that's it, that's our independent variable. And the same holds, let's actually scroll a bit down here, for our Y variable, so our dependent variable, which is monthly returns, and then, as we see here, the return of the asset, which is the return of Microsoft. So we are just defining MSFT here from our frame above this one here. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now you have to know that when using the stats models API you always have to add a constant. Why is that? Referring to the documentation of stats models an intercept is not included by default and should be added by the user. So let's actually do that by defining a new x. So let's call that xsm. And then we are using the add constant function of sm and apply that to our independent variable here. Let's execute that and define our model. And we are using the ordinary least square approach here, which is called by OLS. And now we have to define the dependent variable first. And here we have to define our independent variable in a nutshell. An OLS model minimizes the sum of squares between observed dependent variables and those predicted. So after we have defined our model, we have to fit it. And we are storing that into a variable which we are calling results. So we are accessing our model and fit it. And we want to print out the results of this model. And we are asking for a summary of that. And what we are getting now is this table. What is relevant for us now in this table are those two coefficients. And this coefficient here, 0 0.93, is our market return coefficient, the beta. Let's scroll up again. You're seeing this CAPM regression here. And we're interested in this one here. We want to estimate this one, the beta. And this is nothing else than this coefficient again of 0 0.93. And our alpha, which is our intercept here, is nothing else than the coefficient of this constant here. So again, the alpha of Microsoft is 0 0.02 and the beta of Microsoft is 0 0.93. Now, can we do a kind of check if we are right? Well, of course, we already checked that at Yahoo Finance. And Yahoo Finance is giving us the exact same beta here, 0 0.93. Let's compare it again, 0 0.93. Perfect, right? So to be really honest with you, I've done that for like four stocks, okay? And you are getting similar results 
but not that close as Microsoft. So I made this as a representative example. But if you are estimating your own stock betas, please be aware that you might have slight deviations. Let's go back and visualize our results. I'm using Seaborn here, so I'm importing Seaborn as SNS, but you could also use matplotlib, so for example, the scatterplot. And I'm using SNS.regplot here, defining my x as the market return, GSPC, and the y as the return of Microsoft. And also I have to specify my data frame here, and that is our monthly returns where these data are contained. After that, I'm showing this plot and execute that. And what we are seeing here are the regression results in a visual form. So this line here has a slope of 0.93, which is our beta. And we also can read our alpha here by taking a look at the intercept, which is our market return of zero. And if we go up here, we can see that the intercept is 0.02, which is our alpha. By the way, these shadows are the 95% confidence interval, and you can turn it off if that's annoying for you by just typing in CI equals to none, and then you got that one here. So is taking the risk tree rate into consideration. Please note that I'm just doing a quick walkthrough here and already prepared all code. Let's take a look again at the equation without the risk tree rate. We have the return of an asset equals to alpha plus beta times the market return plus the standard error. And if we want to integrate the risk free rate, we just have to subtract it from the return of the asset and the market return. And what we are getting is this equation here. The asset return minus the risk free rate is equal to alpha plus beta times the market return minus the risk free rate plus the standard error. Now we need this risk free rate from somewhere and therefore we are scraping a very popular finance library that is the Can French data library. And this contains a huge amount of finance data. You can take a look at it. I'm linking it in the video description. In this data library, there is also the risk free rate. And that is what we are getting with this line of command here. So the pandas data reader has a direct connection to this database. And what I'm doing here is just getting the risk free rate. After that, I'm subtracting this risk free rate as in this equation here, right? So I'm subtracting the risk free rate to get the access return. That is, I'm subtracting the risk free rate from the Microsoft return here and from the market return here. And what I'm getting here is the access return. Access return is just the return minus the risk free rate. With these access returns, I'm running my regression again. And that has this form here from above. So my independent variable is the market access return. This is this one here. And my dependent variable is the Microsoft access return. This is this one here. Now I'm just doing the exact same thing as we did above. And then I'm getting those regression results here. And we are seeing that the beta with the access returns is a bit higher here, right? 0.96. And what we are also could conclude is that Yahoo seems to calculate the beta without taking the risk free rate into consideration. But this is just an assumption. Afterwards, of course, we are plotting this again and getting this graph here. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment. If you want to support this channel, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. See you next time. Bye-bye.